really done some of the base work in order to get the brand new us, what can we do to really achieve our goals? That's what we'll talk about today. What a caterpillar calls the end, the rest of the world calls a butterfly. Lao Tzu. I like that quote. I have some butterfly philosophies out there, so I really like that. Today, we're going to talk about the book from Brett Blumenthal. She's an artist, a whole new you. Six steps to ignite change for your best life. Last week, we talked about goals and how we can set the path work by looking at our strengths and our weaknesses and our emotions and try to build ourselves up so we know that we can find a path to get what we want. This time, we're going to talk about how do we get what we want. And so she said the first thing that she wants to do is create a mission statement. Hmm. You know, it's funny because I like mission statements. I remember back, you know, in the day when Franklin Covey was big in his books, he talks a lot about mission statements. And I had one and I've had one for a long time. And she talks about how to get one, you know, what types of qualities and characteristics you want to live by. What do you want to give to the world? What kind of legacy? I like that one. You know, when people think back about you, what is it they think about when they think of you? That was, like I said, a big Franklin Covey thing. I'm not doing mission statements in life in general. I'm now doing them a year at a time. And there might even be hmm, maybe one or two different mission statements. Like I have a mission statement for my work. I think I told you that last year. My mission was full ownership. I wanted to be the owner of my job. And that means taking on the responsibilities, even if I delegate, for what goes on in my work. But then I had another one when it came to my health, which was build a base, which my idea was I'm going to create habits. I'm going to get my rings on my watch every day so that I get the habit of getting up and not just sitting all day. So I have the habit of exercising every day. That worked out pretty well. So she said that first thing is that you're going to look at what you want. So then this next step is that you're going to decide after we did all the other previous steps, we're going to figure out what it is we want to do. And so she said that the first thing, now that we figured out our mission statement in life, then we're going to go through and she says, map the gap. I like that because, and I always think, mind the gap, which is what you get in the British subway system. But where am I lacking? Either, she says, under the emotional side, the physical side of things. You know, if you looked at your ideal self, and I love doing this, we talked a little bit about this last year, about imagining what the perfect situation would be. I remember listening to a radio show back in the 80s that said, if you had a magic wand and could just fix the situation, what would that look like? But she even goes further about thinking about how you would feel. What would you do? What impact would it have on everyone around you and everything that you did if you got your ideal goal? And again, along the way, she has worksheets for all of this. So if you buy the book, you can click on the downloads for the worksheets so that you have them. I'm sure in the print book, they're just right there. But what would it look like to get what you wanted? I want to be in shape. Why? Because I want to go on extraordinary hikes. I did that 100 mile hike in England and that was so much fun. I would love to do more of those things. So what would it look like if I were in the kind of shape that I could do another one? She talks a little bit about mindset, which comes from the Carol Dweck book, Mindset, where you either have a fixed mindset, which means you just think, no, I can never get that done, or a flexible mindset where you think, how can I make this happen? And if you think you're having a mindset issue, then check out the Carol Dweck book too, because it's really good about how we can gain and go into that more flexible mindset so we can get what we want. She said, next, we're going to focus on our strengths and our accomplishments and the things that we've done well in the past. And then things we weren't so good in the past, we're going to bury them, done and over with. We extracted the lessons from them. We removed what happened, maybe what went wrong. We know how to get around that now. And now it's gone. We buried it in the past. We're just going to take those lessons away. And then she said that we're going to visualize what it is it's going to look like. What I like is she talks about how we're always the person who has control. We can always do the things that we need to do because this is our lives. We have the power to affect our lives. I think that's the one thing that I wish I knew when I was younger. You know, I saw one of those things on Twitter, like, what did you wish that you knew when you were younger? 
And what I wrote back is, I wish I knew I had the power to do the things I wanted to do. To me, I was kind of a leaf on the wind. I didn't really have the ability to change things. And now when you get older, I think you sort of figure out, oh, (laughs) yeah, you do. You actually do have the ability to change those things you want to do in your life. You just didn't believe it. And it's so unfortunate that unfortunately, sometimes it takes years to figure that out. So she wants you to know that now. She says, quote, you have the ability to choose happiness. You're in the driver's seat of your own life like that. So when we have our mission statement written down, then we're going to make the vision statement. And the vision statement can be something like a vision board. And we talked about vision boards before where you could go through and take pictures from the internet, cut them out and put it on like a message board or a digital board, put it on your desktop of your computer so that you're always looking at your end goal. So if my goal is to do amazing hikes in the world, put a bulletin board together of all the fantastic hikes I would love to go in. I mean, I watched a video yesterday where the guy was walking on Madeiros Island and it's off the coast of Portugal. It's beautiful. So maybe I would take pictures of those hikes and put them on a bulletin board or on the mirror of my sink in my bathroom. So every day when I get up, I see my goal right there. It'll encourage me throughout the rest of the day so that I can stick to what it is I'm planning to do. And she says that if we have that vision, it'll make it feel real. It'll keep us inspired and it'll be attainable because It's something that is possibly realistic. So that she wants you to ask that question too, is your vision something you can do within a reasonable amount of time? Is it something that you can actually get done? I mean, if I my goal was to hike up the Himalayan mountains, not sure that's really realistic. That would take a lot of fitness and I have asthma. It probably wouldn't work for me. But hiking in Portugal, I could do that. So that's a realistic goal. So that's where she wants to keep it. She wants you to say your vision out loud. We talked about having some sort of a mantra or a saying that reminds yourself every day. And I like to put it in, I'm the kind of person who strives for what I want and exercises so I can go on amazing hikes or something like that. I'm the kind of person, doesn't put yourself down. It encourages you to be the kind of person who accomplishes your goal. Then she says that you want to frame it. She says that that's where you're going to take the artistic approach, maybe make that vision board. I'm not very artistic. She is. So she can paint. She can make fonts. She can make neat things to see her vision. But for me, I just grab things off of the internet, print them off, and then sort of put them in a collage. That works a little bit better for me. And then the other part is tell other people. Again, as soon as you tell people what it is you're trying to do, They'll be a support to you. They'll encourage you. Maybe they're on the same path that you are and you can work on it together. So that's fun. She also gives the interesting idea that Pinterest is another great way to have a sort of a digital vision board. And I agree with her. Pinterest is a really interesting way to visually see things. And so you could create a whole board with your goals. Back in the day when I was doing Pinterest, I had all the amazing hikes in the world. And then each Slide of it had a picture of that amazing hike. Now I'm using Notion, which I'm an affiliate of, so you can click on the link. But I have Notion places that I want to go with pictures of it inside the Notion database. So I'm not using Pinterest, but there are other tools. But if you want something easy, no technology, Pinterest is a great way to go. And then she wants you to get the specifics. You know, we're asked the W questions What do I want? Why do I want it? Who else do I need to help me do that goal? So you're thinking that if you have a family and your goal is to become a great screenwriter in Hollywood, your husband or your wife is going to have to be involved in that goal because you're going to move. You're going to go someplace and live someplace else. You need to have that agreement between you. Where are you going to get this goal done? And then which steps, she says, are necessary. So we're going to do what Adam Savage told us to do in episode 163, where he told us to figure out how to take those steps and break them into small chunks. And then, of course, is the measurable. How will I know I'm accomplishing my goal? 
If you're looking at weight, there's obviously the scale, but there's other things. There's size of clothes, how great I feel when I go for a walk, those kinds of things. And then the goals themselves are actionable. And people don't say this enough, but you can't just say, I want to be happy. I want to lose weight. Losing weight's okay-ish, but instead it should be, I'm going to eat only 10 grams of sugar a day and I'm going to exercise 30 minutes every day. It's measurable, it's actionable, and it's not this kind of fluffy goal that you're looking at. It's something very specific. And she wants you to know, is there anything that you have to do to get your goal? Anything you have to learn? Or do you need external help, money, time, anything else? So make a list of the resources you need in order to get your goal. And then the question comes in, can you let go of other options? You know, because again, you can do many things in your life, but you maybe can't do all of them at the same time. So if you're trying to lose weight and focus on exercise and getting outside, your podcasting adventures might take a backseat for a while. Or if you're a perfectionist, is your perfectionism preventing you from doing the thing you want to do? Are there ways that you can put away some of the hurdles that are going to get in your way and keep at them? And that means you're going to build that confidence that you can get this done. You're going to limit the other things that you need to get done so that you have time to focus on this. There are only so many hours in the day, so you have to possibly set aside things in order to get these goals set. And then again, break it down by small ch chunks. If you were going to look for losing weight, I'm going to set out my clothes every day to exercise. When I go grocery shopping, I'm going to go grocery shopping with a list that is determined that will give me better health. And I'm only going to buy the things on those lists. I'm going to set aside the specific time to exercise and I'm going to measure every Sunday morning with a tape measure and a scale. You know, those are the small chunks you're going to do in order to break things down for your goals. And what's really good is if you can have some kind of a checklist. There are a lot of apps out there. We talked about them in episode 15 and 16. We talked about low-tech or high-tech ways of tracking habits. But can you track these habits? Say when you did them. Maybe even the, there's a good one called Streaks, which is fantastic for tracking habits. So it might differ depending on your goal. If you're looking to exercise, which is a daily goal, Streaks is a fantastic way to go about it because you're going to check every day the things that you did that you said you were going to do. If you're looking at something that is more like finding a new job or moving to a new town, those are very specific tasks that you may not repeat any step. You might one day write your resume the next week, write your cover letter. The week after that, find five jobs in a website that is for jobs in your field that you're looking at. You know, those are going to be things that once you get them done, they're done. And so that might be a better way of going about it in creating a list instead of doing a habit tracker like streaks. But find which is your goal, how you're going to break it up into small chunks, and then find a method for yourself how you can go ahead and track those goals. So if it is that kind of thing where you have a list, putting in target dates, we didn't talk about this yet, but there's the get it done system. But there are systems in place where you don't necessarily put your deadlines in. Instead, you put your start dates in. I'm going to start sending out this resume on March 1st, and then you'll match the goals to actual dates, which will make it easier for you to track and give yourself deadlines. Deadlines are a good way to keep yourself accountable. Sometimes sharing those deadlines also helps you keep accountable too. And sometimes too, then this is going to be getting rid of some other things so that you can clear your plate a bit to get these things done. And the funny thing is, is I had a bunch of plans last year, but when this job came up that I was going to take, this job was a hard job to get and it required a lot of time for me. Most of the things I had on my goal list from April all the way through July, they were completely off my goal list. I was barely surviving the things I had to do with this podcast. Well, I love doing the podcast, but everything else had to go. I'm getting this job and I'm doing a podcast and I'm exercising. And those three things were the only things I retained in my life just because I was so busy. So getting rid of things that maybe are extra things. You know, I track all my books 
that I read and I have a little tracker and every time I read a book, I put the dates in there. I've had to let that go. I just don't have the time for it. So getting rid of those uh, annoying time wasters that aren't important, that's a good way to go. Getting rid of projects that aren't important. Again, you're going to want to focus on the things that are important. And then ask yourself, you know, when she says every day, you're going to ask yourself, am I going to eat healthy today? What will I do in order to make sure that my health today is better than it was yesterday? Am I going to go to the gym? What time am I going to get to the gym? And do some questioning of yourself so that you can put some specifics in, not just in your general plan, but for today, this is the plan. Because if you start the day focusing in on your plan, it'll make your ability to get that plan done for the rest of the day much easier. And then you're going to want to pat yourself on the back. You're going to want to reward yourself for when you have positive things happen. You're going to want to, she says, catch your moments of consistency. I like that. Because when you find that you exercise a day and then you exercise the next day, like that, two days, woohoo. You're going to look for those opportunities where you're doing great. You're starting to win. You're starting to get over the hump of resistance because of your brand new you. So when you see yourself having wins and having consistency, that's when you're going to do that little mental pat on the back. And then she says the important part, too, is accountability. I am a full believer in accountability. A lot of times people need accountability in order to do things. There's a Gretchen Rubin book that's called The Four Tendencies. And in her opinion, there's one group of people who are great at accountability. They can just put something on a list and do it. That's not me. Then the second one is the obliger that when I have someone I feel obligated to, boy, I do it right away. I find when I'm obligated to myself, I struggle more. So there are ways of building that accountability to someone else. Like I said, having a workout partner. Or a hiking partner. If I'm going to go hiking with my friend that I went to England with and we're going to plan a time to go on our next hike, I better do my thing. But I don't want to be the person that lets us down and not be ready to go on our next hike. And then the third group in that accountability group are rebels. If you tell them to do something, they'll do the opposite. So you have a whole other thing going on. And then there's another group of people that they can be accountable if they learn the whys. Why is this important that I do it? So find out exactly how accountability can work for you and how you can get it. That might be even hiring someone like a life coach. My trainer asked me this morning, send me your fitness goals for this year and I'm going to hold you accountable. Okay. So there you have it. Sometimes you get accountability, whether you wanted it or not, but important in order to get the brand new you. So my challenge to you is come up with one small goal and then write out a mission statement for your new goal, and then create a vision board or a vision statement, pictures, artistic something or other that will show you on a day-to-day basis. Just be a little tiny piece of cardboard with some printed out things from the internet, be a Pinterest board, something, so that when you can gaze upon it, you'll see exactly what your goal is going to look like once you have it. All right, everyone, thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Please remember that you can always email me at jill at startwithsmallsteps.com. And remember, our walk to the future with our goals right in hand starts with small steps. 